Hello everyone, welcome back to My Hero Academia Podfix. Today I'll be starting a new fic entitled Hidden Messages. Here's the summary. For years, Katsuki Bakugo had been Izuku Midoriya's bully, and that's just about how everyone knew it, except that wasn't actually the case at all. Through a secret language, they were able to fool the world into thinking that they weren't actually best friends. So when midway through their first year at UA, when they were given an assignment that required secretive communication, they knew that they were guaranteed an A. However, they weren't prepared for the chaos it would bring, or the relationship that would result from it. Chapter 1. The Assignment It was a normal Tuesday, the day the assignment that would change everything was assigned. Class 1A had gone to class expecting a normal day, many of them needing the normalcy after the dangerous Shia Hisaikai raid that had happened the week before. There was nothing unusual as the class slowly filled the room to start the day. Cheerful but tired greetings rang out. The day differed from the normal almost immediately. When after the daily announcements, I saw it didn't take a nap like he normally would for the remainder of homeroom. Instead, he stayed standing at the front of the class. Today, during foundational heroics, besides paying attention to the lecture, you'll also be completing another assignment. The lesson today is a continuation of the lessons on communication and battle. So far, everything you've learned has been about verbal communication. Today will be about nonverbal and more secretive forms of communication, being able to communicate without letting anyone else know in the room what you're saying. Aizawa looked at each of the students as he spoke. Many of the students looked worried about the assignment, while others seemed excited. The students that looked the most worried were some of the loudest in the class, the students who wouldn't know subtlety if it hit him in the face. But to his surprise, Bakugo and McDoria looked excited. From the very first day, it had been obvious that Bakugo was loud and explosive. Midoriya, however, was quiet at first, but after getting more comfortable in class, it was pretty well known that he was talkative, regularly muttering to himself without noticing. The fact that neither of them seemed at all worried about the assignment was strange. This is the first iteration of an assignment that you'll be doing multiple times. It's fairly simple, but that doesn't mean that it is easy. At the beginning of class, you'll be handed a prompt. Your goal is to communicate a message to your partner without anyone else knowing. I will be lecturing, and there will be an open note quiz on my lecture at the end of class, so you still are expected to pay attention. I'll be putting a stop to any obvious attempts that interrupt class, so please put some effort into this. Immediately, multiple hands shot up. Ida, you mentioned that the lesson has to do with communicating without letting everyone else know. Will we be penalized if other people figure out our message? Aizawa let a grin overtake his face. Yes, points will be deducted for every person that is not your partner that figures out your message. Alternatively, you will gain points for every message you can figure out that's not your partner's. As part of the quiz, at the end of the class, you'll need to write down your own prompt, your message, the message from your partner, as well as any other messages that you may have figured out. Yayorozu. What sort of messages will they be? Will they be random or about something relevant to the lecture? Also, how long can we expect the messages to be? You will be coming up with a message based on a prompt that I will give you. The prompt will require you to figure out information and then relay it to your partner. The only official requirement for the length of the message is that it needs to be enough to fulfill the prompt, but longer messages will get extra points. Shinso. Do we have to know the message word for word, or is having the gist of it fine? Having a general idea of the message is fine as long as you have all the important information. The closer to the exact message, the more points you'll get. Midoriya. Do we lose points if we write down someone else's message, but we get it wrong? You will not be penalized for writing down other people's messages incorrectly as long as they're not your partner. I recommend that you write down whatever you think you can figure out, even if you aren't sure because parcel messages can get you points. Ashido. Will you assign partners or can we choose them? Ashido is practically bouncing in her seat at the prospect of working with a partner. You will get to choose your partner. I highly recommend that you choose strategically, but ultimately it's up to you. Aizawa paused to allow any more hands to go up, but when none did, he continued. You have until the end of the period to choose your partner. Once you've decided, write your name and your partner's name on a piece of paper. Turn it in, face down on the podium. Each person needs to turn in a paper to confirm that you are both on the same page. I highly recommend that you try to be subtle about who your partner is. But again, ultimately it is up to you. Aizawa hit a smile as he laid down for his usual morning nap. Every year he introduces this assignment, and without fail, the students don't listen to his warnings. They make it obvious from the very beginning who their partner is, and it is almost never someone that they can efficiently communicate with. He watches one year, as two students try to communicate through facial expressions, which on its own wasn't a bad idea, but they sat directly behind each other in class, meaning that one of them would have to turn around completely to be effective. 
that pair failed that time around because they used that idea with their later partners in later iterations of the assignment to some success. He couldn't deny that he was excited for lunch today. Like usual, Vlad King and him had planned their first iteration of this assignment to be on the same day. This guarantees that lunch will be chaotic. Students will be trying to get away from their friends to subtly discuss plans while teachers will all be on the lookout. Every year there's a betting pool between all of the teachers about which students will be the most successful. Just about every teacher that interacts with the first-year hero students plays bets on which class will do better overall, as well as the highest-scoring pair and the highest-scoring student. All bets are placed during foundational heroics, with the respective homeroom teachers banned from participating. I saw I never cared much for the betting part. He can't participate anyway. But he always found all of the antics amusing. He was also curious about how this particular class would do. Unlike most years, he actually had some students that had proven to be proficient in stealth assignments, especially since Shinso had replaced Mineta. Also, unlike previous classes, this class understood just how important this type of communication could be. They have fought villains before. They knew to take this seriously. After the USJ, it was proposed that they moved up the assignment because the students in 13 were called out by villains for strategizing in front of them, but ultimately, it was decided that they should have the lesson at the normal time. Aizawa didn't want to think about whether this knowledge would have been useful at camp, but at least they were doing this assignment now. While they knew to take the assignment seriously, Class 1A isn't calm about anything. As soon as Aizawa let them loose to figure out their partners, it was chaos. Some students quietly looked across the room and, with eye contact and a small nod, determined who they were partnered with. They were the minority, though, because most of the class immediately got up to go ask someone to partner with them, loudly. Izuku and Katsuki were not part of either group, but no one really noticed. Izuku and Katsuki's friendship was probably their best-kept secret. Everybody knows that they were friends when they were children. That is common knowledge to just about everyone who meets them, after all. Only a childhood friend would ever be allowed to call King Explosion Murder Kachan. However, it is obvious to everyone that they are no longer friends. After Izuku had been diagnosed as quirkless, everything changed. Kotsky was disgusted by the idea of being friends with a useless, quirkless Deku and began to bully him. He remained a bully all throughout elementary and middle school, only calming down slightly once they reached high school, or at least that's what everyone thinks. Kotsky was upset at first. His best friend wasn't able to be a hero with him, but he never started to hate Izuku. However, everyone else did. Izuku was bullied endlessly, and Kotsky was getting in fights almost daily to try to defend him. After a while of fighting, Kotsky was fed up and he turned on Izuku just once. And all he did was yell, but to his surprise, as soon as he started going off on him, everyone else left Izuku alone. That day, they came up with their plan, the plan that they've followed ever since. It was pretty simple. Kotsky was already considered a promising future hero, so it wouldn't be difficult to convince the extras in their class to follow his lead once he proves to be on their side. From there, he'll become Izuku's main tormentor, staking his claim on him. After that, no one would dare bother either of them. Their plan worked frighteningly well. Katsuki was king of the class, and no one dared bother Izuku without Katsuki leading them. However, neither of them were happy. They knew that if they were caught being friendly to each other, life would go back to how it was before. But they were lonely. No one wanted to befriend the quirkless Deku, and if they did want to, they wouldn't dare. And Katsuki didn't want to be friends with any of the extras in his class that had pushed him into bullying his best friend. Their solution was genius. If they couldn't openly be friends with each other, they would be friends secretly. This didn't mean that they would only be friends outside of school. That was enough for them. They wanted to be able to talk freely at school without anyone knowing, so they created their own language. At first it was sort of Morse code, but after a while they started getting weird looks. So they added some sign language, but that also caught people's attention. Over time, and with a lot of trial and error, the language evolved, becoming more and more subtle. Each breath could have a meaning behind it. Every tiny twitch a message, their conversations blended into their normal mannerisms. Their ears were always listening for nearly silent clicks that would cue them into the start of a message. Even with their hidden friendship, their conflict at the beginning of their high school career was real. One for all drove a wedge between them. Izuku was sworn to secrecy about how he suddenly had a quirk, leaving Katsuki to draw on the only plausible conclusion, that Izuku had been lying all along. For the first time in years... There was no messages to be deciphered. It was as freeing as it was depressing. Their constant conversations had become second nature to them, but after this betrayal, the conversation stopped. Both missed the other, but Izuku didn't know how to fix what had happened, and Katsuki was still angry. The fight after the provisional exam finally cleared the air between them. 
their secret conversation started up again, but even though there was nothing stopping them from being real friends again, they still kept their friendship a secret, partially because it was a habit, partially because they didn't really know how to be friends openly, and partially because they were pretty sure that suddenly being friends would be too much for everyone to handle. Recently, though, they were starting to think that it was about time that they allowed themselves to be actual friends, instead of hiding it. Acing this assignment together could be the start of that. The second that Aizawa announced that they would get to choose their partners, they had already agreed to work together. As their classmates were frantically trying to find a partner, Izuku and Katsuki were calmly preparing for their classes that day. They also were continuing the conversation they had been having all morning about the new hero that debuted the day before, but they were the only ones that knew about it. Izuku was approached immediately by Todoroki, and then by Uraraka, and then Ida, but he calmly and quietly told them that he already had a partner. Each of them looked at him suspiciously, but they had no choice but to move off to find another. Uraraka did try to question who his partner was, but Izuku didn't answer, and Uraraka realized that she didn't have long to find her own partner, so she hurried away. Kirishima came to Katsuki immediately, assuming that they would work together. He was shocked to find that Katsuki already had a partner, but he didn't have time to question him. People were pairing up fast. Izuku made sure to turn his paper in after about half the class already had, while Katsuki waited to be one of the last. They had already told people that they had a partner, but they didn't want to hint at who their partner was. The rest of the morning was chaotic. The easy part of the assignment was choosing a partner. Now they had to figure out how to communicate with them. Most students gave up trying to pay attention in class, instead using that time to brainstorm. The teachers would normally be annoyed, but knowing what was going on, they were more amused than anything. Every year the same thing happened, so they planned easy lessons. Finally, after an unusually large amount of bathroom breaks and a record number of notes passed, it was time for lunch. Kaminari didn't care that the class would figure out who his partner was. He just dragged Aoyama away. Following his lead, Saro and Kirishima went off to find some less populated areas to talk. The rest of the class heeded Aizawa's advice and tried to hide who their partner was with varying levels of success. They went off to lunch with their normal friend groups and tried to act like nothing was different. Izuku sat with most of his usual lunch group, to start with Uraraka, Su, Ida, Shinso, Todoroki. Occasionally, the quiet group, made up of Koda, Tokiyami, and Shoji, would join them as well, but none made an appearance today. Their conversations were more subdued than usual, the assignment obviously on their minds, but they tried to go on as they normally would. To their confusion, Izuku seemed unaffected by the looming assignment. He didn't even go on a mumble rant once. Throughout lunch period, people started to make excuses to leave. First was Ida. He said something about the bathroom before marching away in the opposite direction of the bathroom. Exactly two minutes later, Todoroki got up, said he was also needing to go to the bathroom, and then went the same direction that Ida had gone. The group let out a giggle at how obvious they were, before continuing with their conversations. Next up was Shinso. He didn't bother to give an excuse, just getting up and leaving with a mumbled, See you later. Uraraka and Sue hung around for a bit longer because they both left within a couple of minutes of each other. With still over half of the lunch left, Izuku found himself sitting alone. He didn't mind much. He knew that this would happen as soon as the assignment was explained. He busied himself with watching the rest of the students in the cafeteria. Looking around, he noticed that Bakugo was left sitting alone, his friends probably all having done the same thing that his own friends did. Izuku giggled as he noticed that Class 1B was acting just like Class 1A. Apparently they were doing the same assignment. After lunch, there was only one class before foundational heroics. Some of the students looked more relaxed now that they had made a plan over lunch. Other students looked even more worried than before. Even with there being more relaxed students, the tension was still palpable from the anticipation for the assignment. The class period went by slowly, but finally it came time for the assignment to start. Just like he promised, the first thing Aizawa did when he walked in the room was hand each student a folded up piece of paper. Each of you has been given a prompt at random. You have until class ends to figure out what your message will be and communicate it to your partner. I will hand out a quiz in the last ten minutes of class. You can continue to try and communicate your message during the quiz. However, all messages have to be written down. All questions on the quiz must be answered by the time that class ends for them to count. Before we begin the lesson, I want to make this clear. There is no such thing as cheating in this assignment. Anything goes, but I will stop you if I notice any disruptive behavior or anything that wouldn't normally be allowed in class. Now... For the lecture today, as I mentioned earlier this morning, we will be talking about nonverbal and secretive communication. I am differentiating between the two because you can have nonverbal communication that is also not necessarily subtle, such as sign language. 
Aizawa kept lecturing, but the majority of the class wasn't paying much attention. Instead, there was a flurry of activity as each person was opening their prompts and attempting to figure out what their message would be. Two students, however, took notes as diligently as normal. Katsuki and Izuku had years of practice with note-taking while conversing. It was almost second nature at this point. They knew that the hardest part of the assignment would be figuring out what their message would be. I figured out my message, nerd. Katsuki communicated to Izuku not long after class started. Cool, what is it? Jiro's third line of her note says, Types of nonverbal communications include, The next few lines say, Sign language, Morse code, signals, body cues, etc. She also wrote a little note where she wrote sign language, asked Koda or maybe Shinso. Izuku pulled out a spare notebook and wrote down Katsuki's message so that he would remember it. To make sure that no one else could read it, he wrote it in the same code that he developed to write his quirk notes in. Wait, what was your prompt? Izuku knew that everyone had different prompts, but that was really different from his. What is the third line in the person to your left's notes? If you are the person farthest on the left, then answer for the person to your right. Even though he didn't need to, Izuku wrote down Kotsky's prompt by his message. Oh, okay, that's just really different from my prompt. Oh, what's your prompt? What is something that you can figure out about someone in the room just by observation? So, let's hear it, nerd. This is what you're good at, after all. What have you observed? Izuku looked around the room quickly, noting things that he could say. That's the problem. I have too many choices. And what if I say something that the person would prefer Mr. Aizawa didn't know? I don't want to accidentally out someone or anything. So there are other closeted people in the class? Kotsky let out a sound that Izuku knew to be a chuckle, but to anyone else it sounded just like a small cough. His question was obviously a joke, but it flustered Izuku anyways. No, well, yes, but that's not the point. Besides, I know you have just as good of a gaydar as I do. They had come out to each other years ago. Izuku is pansexual and Kotsky is gay. After coming out to each other, they sometimes spent classes in middle school guessing their classmates' of sexuality. They were usually right, but after someone was outed and it didn't go well for them, speculating on their peers' of sexuality just didn't sit right with them anymore. They still couldn't help but notice different things, but they just didn't talk about it anymore. It wasn't up to them to label anyone anyway. Okay, okay, so put something that Mr. Aizawa for sure already knows. Yeah, but what? How am I supposed to know what he does or doesn't know? He knows stuff about himself, so fucking observe him. Izuku almost hit himself. The answer seemed so obvious. That's a great idea, Kachan. Oh my god, did Iris seriously just fucking whisper her message to Octo Arms? What part of nonverbal did she not get? What was her message? Izuku ignored his friends' strange nicknames for their classmates. He had never been good at remembering people's names, even when they were little. Why should I tell you? Come on, I'll tell you any messages I figure out. You tell me all the ones you figure out. After all, I bet I could figure out more than you. It wasn't the first time that Izuku got him to do things by goading him into competition, and it definitely wasn't going to be the last. All right, you're on, nerd. Jiro's message was, Kirishima has a crimson ride pencil case that's covered in words like manly and chivalry. Izuka wrote down Jiro's message, in code, in his notebook. Looking over at Saro, he figured out his message and wrote it down as well before telling Katsuki. I think I know what Saro's message is. He pointed at Jiro, then wrote down line one, nonverbal slash secretive communication is used a lot in underground heroics. He could just be taking notes. No, he was very deliberate and purposely wrote it near where Kirishima could read it. Please refrain from looking at each other's papers during class, Kirishima. Aizawa suddenly interrupted his lecture to call out Kirishima, who was half out of his chair, trying to see what Sarah wrote. Okay, so maybe that was the message, but why did Shitty Hair have to practically get out of his fucking chair to read it? Oh, Sarah wrote it in Spanish so that no one else would read it. Why would Tapeface write it in fucking Spanish? Shitty Hair doesn't even know Spanish. I think the plan was for him to try to sneakily use Google Translate. Wait, since when did you know Spanish? Izuku held back a grin. I got bored in middle school, and I thought languages were cool. I don't know why that surprised me. You were always a weird fucking nerd. Says the one who knows French and JSL. Plus, we literally created this entirely silent language. You had a language phase, too. That was out of necessity. My parents spend a shit ton of time in France, and I'm losing my fucking hearing. You didn't need to know Spanish. Also, you learned both of those languages with me. Nisuku moved his metal water bottle a bit, so that it was more towards the side of his desk. But it could be helpful. Speaking of languages, Kota and Shinso are using sign language to tell each other their messages. Shinso's is, Yayarosu is using a black pen. Kota's is, Asui is drinking water. 
How can you even see that shit? They're sitting behind you. Izuku held back a giggle as he wrote down the new messages. I have a very strategically placed reflective water bottle on my desk. Holy shit. Octo Arms just whispered his message back to ears. I know that they have advanced hearing, but do they realize that the rest of us still have fucking ears? What was the message? Ojiro has books, folders, a pencil case, and some loose paper in his bag. Izuku was writing down the message. He looked up to see Kaminari pointing and gesturing. I think I figured out Kaminari's message. He keeps pointing to Saro while holding a pencil case and doing the Spider-Man thing. I think he's trying to describe Saro's Spider-Man pencil case. That's four to me, two to you. Wow, Kachan. Looks like I might win this one. Not so fast, Deku. Shitty hair's message is that Koda has a yellow pencil. Frog's message is that Glasses is drinking orange juice. As Suzuka wrote, he questioned Katsuki. How did you manage to figure those out anyway? And since when do you know Koda's name? Shitty Hair accidentally texted me instead of Tape Face. Frog keeps turning to look at Glasses and then miming drinking to Round Face. How'd you know he's drinking orange juice, though? Izuka knows that Ida only drinks orange juice and occasionally water, but he thought that only his friend group knew that. It's fucking common knowledge. Glasses drinks orange juice for his quirk. I didn't think it was common knowledge, but okay. Kirishima, put your phone away or I'll have to take it. Same to you, Ashido. Aizawa interrupted his lecture again to call out some of the people that were being way too obvious. I'm going to go get a tissue and see if I can figure out any more. What? Mizuka didn't answer before he was fast walking to the front of the class. Midoriya, what are you doing out of your seat? Aizawa called out to him. Instead of answering, Izuku grabbed a tissue from the teacher's desk, sneezed into it, and then sneezed again, and again. After a fairly impressive number of sneezes, Izuku finally spoke. Sorry, I really needed a tissue. Very well. Back to what I was saying. As Aizawa continued the lecture, Izuku took his time observing his classmates before slowly making his way to the trash can by the door, and then to his seat. As he was sneezing, he had noticed Hagakure get up while no one else was looking and exchange notes on Ojiro's desk. As Izuku walked to the trash, he was able to look at the note on Ojiro's desk, and on his way to his seat, he managed to see the note on Hagakure's. As Izuku started to write what he found out, he shared with Katsuki. Hagakure's message is, Shoji has textbooks, a notebook, and a pen in his bag. Ojiro's message is, the seventh line in Aoyama's note is, It seems that it is possible to shine too brightly while undercover. What the fuck? I stopped questioning Aoyama a while ago. Fair enough. While you were causing a distraction, I was able to partially figure out some of other people's messages. Roundface kept pointing at Sugar Crash, then a notebook, then holding up ten fingers, and then shaking her head. I think she was saying that the fucker doesn't have anything written on the line ten of his notes. Birdhead's message had something to do with wrists. He would point at his wrist, and then at glasses, Sugar Crash, Octo Arms, Frog, and you. Huh. What do our wrists have in common? I don't know, nerd. I was hoping you'd figure it out. Izuka looked down at his wrist, searching for a clue, and then looked at Asui's wrist, and then Shoji's. We all wear watches. Ida, Sato, Shoji, Asui, uh, I mean Sue, and I all wear watches. I shouldn't have to remind you not to pass notes in class. Ashido, hand it over, please. Ashido sheepishly handed Aizawa the paper that had been delivered to her by a little device that was obviously made by Yayorozu. Luckily for them, Aizawa didn't read the note aloud, but he did rip it up before throwing it away. Aizawa walked to the front of the room and pulled out a stack of paper. He spoke as he handed out the papers. As I mentioned before, you'll have the final ten minutes of class to work on this quiz. It's an open note quiz, but I will not accept anything written after the bell rings for the end of class. You may begin as soon as you get your papers. Izuku looked over the questions on the quiz and answered them quickly. As promised, they were all about what Aizawa had been lecturing about. The bottom of the page contained instructions on how to format the back to turn in all their messages. First, they'd write their prompt, then their message, followed by their partner's message, and then any other messages they figured out. Nerd, what's your message? You never came up with one. Oh, uh... Izuka looked around the room before his eyes landed on Aizawa's hand, which was reaching for something around his neck. Mr. Aizawa's married. He wears a ring on a chain around his neck and when he's in costume, but the tan on his finger means that he probably wears it when he's not in public. If I had to guess, I would say he's married to present Mike. Mr. Aizawa always smiles a little when he walks in. Damn, I was not expecting that, but now that you pointed out, it weirdly makes sense. Both boys started writing down the other messages after that, because Azuka wrote down all the messages that he had to do, and he translated them back to Japanese, copying them over. Katsuki didn't have a reliable way to write them down, so instead he was relying on memory. Azuka figured that Katsuki would do that, 
so he decided to just tell him all the messages again as he wrote them. Pens down, Aizawa called out at the end, where the bell rang to signal the end of class. Before Izuku handed in his paper, he counted out how many messages they figured out. Kachan, we tied. Kinda, at least. I mean, I guess you could say I won, because you only figured out five fully, and I helped with figuring out Tokiyami's message. Plus, I had six that I figured out, but you were the one who actually saw Tokiyami's message. I just figured out what it meant, which is what gave us the points. I guess you could say that we both each get half a point. Nerd, we tied. Izuka started packing up his things. But really, I won, though. What? No. I'm the one that saw Birdhead's message. But I translated it. So? You wouldn't have figured out shit if I hadn't told you what I saw. But Kachan! Fine, fucker. You won, but you won't next time. The conversation ended as they both finished packing up for the day and left class, splitting into their separate friend groups. Oh my god, that was so hard! Nina yelled as Kotsky walked up to the group. Tell me about it. I thought using Google Translate would be easy, but no one told me Spanish had little thingies over the top of the letters that made it harder to type. Kirishima held his head in his hands. Sorry, dude. I forgot to mention that when we came up with the plan. Sarah at least had the decency to sound apologetic. Fucking idiots. Why would you try to use a language you both wouldn't understand? Also, shitty hair. Do you not know how to fucking check who you're sending shit to? What? The rest of the group questioned as Kirishima rubbed his face. I got a fucking text in the middle of the class with this message. This fucker didn't check who he was texting and sent it to me instead of tape face. Holy shit. You got caught texting, but you got nothing out of it? Kaminari busted out laughing. Hey, dunce face, maybe you shouldn't be the one laughing. You and Raccoon Eyes were the two most obvious fuckers in the class. At least he didn't point so aggressively that it caught everyone's attention. Makako didn't personally figure out Kaminari's message, but he hoped calling him out on it might inspire him to do better next time. Well, what about you, Bakugo? Did you even try to work with your partner? Kaminari deflected. Yeah, wait, who was your partner? Kirishima spoke up. Idiots, we're doing this assignment again. I'm not going to tell you who my fucking partner is. Kotsky was a little disappointed that his idiots didn't recognize the advantage of keeping their partners a secret, but he was also a little happy that they were taking an interest anyway. He enjoyed having friends that could actually act like they liked having him around, even if he didn't exactly return the sentiment. Although... The only person that really knew what he really thought was across the hallway. He was pretty sure that the idiots he calls his friends had some idea that he considers them as such. Why does it matter? You won't know who all our partners are, Kaminari said. If I fucking tell you, you might figure out what to look for. Wait, so you did try on this assignment? Mina questioned him. Of course I fucking tried on the assignment. It was probably the easiest assignment we had all year. Easy? All of his idiots chorused at once. Down the hallway, Izuku had to chuckle when he heard Kotsky's group of friends yell. He had no doubt that Kotsky just mentioned what he thought of the assignment, and Kotsky's friends did not agree with his assessment. While listening to Uraraka rant about the difficulties of sitting behind her partner, Izuku got Kotsky's attention and confirmed his theory. He was tempted to continue the conversation, but his friends were walking too far from Kotsky's group, so he had to settle for sharing a small smile as they walked away instead. All right, everyone, this concludes the first chapter of Hidden Messages. I hope you guys like this one. It's a favorite of mine. I really like the concept because it's pretty unique. Uh, as always, though, I appreciate the support and thank you so much for listening.